before I start, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm working at Datadog um, as a software engineer, and for the last three years, I've been contributing to the open source tracing libraries for the most part. Now, the, yeah, the department is APM, Application Performance Monitoring. I live uh, in Paris as well. Uh, I've heard some French folks around there, so maybe I'll make some new connections, hopefully. <laughs> Now, before we start, um, also speaker notes are not showing. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'll have to wing it. Anyways, before I start, um, I would like to begin with the memory recap. This is very simple. We all know that the primitive types have the predetermined size beforehand. But when it comes to composite types such as structs, it begins to be a bit more complicated. As, they are laid, um, as the struct fields are laid out in a specific way, it might affect the final size. Now, so if we take a look at the struct, you can see that um, it's a pretty simple example. We have uh, three fields with four, eight, and one byte of size respectively. Um, what do you think is the size of it? Now, if any of you guessed 24, you would be right. Oh, I see someone did guess it, but probably just one person. Now, why exactly 24 bytes? In fact, all of this is um, to do with alignment and padding. As um, when you have a specific pattern for memory access, um, this allows for the CPU to read and write to the data much faster. And uh, not aligned data leads to performance penalties. So this is all to say that uh, when the struct fields are laid out in a specific way, it might affect uh, your performance because if you can pack, hence the name of the talk, if you can pack more data into the same memory block, you will be able to fit more memory blocks into the page, less page to retrieve from the operating system and thus that's where the performance uh, benefit comes in from the from packing the struct fields. Now, let me take a step back and actually review the alignment rules. The first one states that the starting address of memory blocks must be aligned to the multiple of a word length. Word length difference from uh, operating from the architecture, for example, word length on 32-bit would be 4 bytes, and on 64-bit would be 8 bytes. So we have two structs which, are the, which have the same fields, even the same order, but on 64-bit, the size of the first struct would be 24 because the first field has to have 6 bytes of padding. 6 bytes specifically because the word length is 8 bytes, and the first field cannot fit with the second field in the memory block of eight bytes. So we need to add six bytes of padding, which is just basically empty bytes, to adhere to specific memory boundaries. Now, on 32-bit, the size would be smaller naturally because there's only two bytes after the first field and three bytes of padding after the last one. When it comes to the um, second alignment rule, it's a bit trickier um, in a sense. The struct has to follow in the alignment of the largest field that's there. However, there's also exception to this rule in a sense. If you take a look at the first struct, we have just three Boolean fields and the largest field there has one byte of a size. Now, the size of the struct will be in the end the multiple of one byte, which is probably not the best example now I realize, but uh, you will see how it matters later. The second struct has the largest field of four bytes, and the size will be a multiple of four. This rule only applies if the larger size is smaller of the word length. So if you take these simple examples and you run an uh, online compiler on 32-bit or 64-bit, you will get different uh, results. Now, um, now that we know these rules, Let's take a look at how we can optimize and reorder the fields of the struct we've seen in the first example. 
you can see how we're just basically shuffling um, our, our fields and the size decreases by 30%. This is due to the fact that the first two fields of the construct, they're actually going to fall into the same memory block. And thus, we will have decreased the padding um, from, the, from 4 bytes plus 7 bytes, which is 11, to only 3 bytes of padding. Now, um, this is all good in theory, but uh, let's take a look at how it would perform um, with our benchmarks. Um, the benchmarks are, that I set up are pretty pretty simple, and before actually going with them, I slightly inflated the uh, structs to make it a bit more interesting. And you can see that uh, the, both of the structs, they in fact have the same number of fields and the types. There is eight booleans, eight floats, but in the first example, it's a boolean float repeated eight times, pretty much. So the size of those structs would be 128 and 72 bytes respectively, which if you think about it, that's already a lot. That's almost twice the size. Now, when it comes to benchmarks specifically, there is two identical benchmarks. All we do is uh, we create the slice, we populate it with just random floats, and later we iterate over it. And the results can be quite surprising, in fact. Um, as you can see, this is what we got. I did run the benchmarks multiple, multiple times, and uh, um, the results are pretty consistent. This would be around 43%. The running the optimized structures would take around 43% of time that it requires for the unoptimized structure benchmark to run. Um, which is for me is a pretty jarring difference. And before someone asks, even if he reset the timer after initializing the um, slice, the results are still, much, still pretty much the same. So, which shows that even just simply reading, uh, overrating through the slice that we have uh, in our benchmarks yields the same results. Now, so, quick summary of what we have learned so far. We know that the structure size depends on the size of its fields, um, on the order, order effects, alignment, and padding, as we have previously mentioned, and the structs with the same content but efficiently, um, if with the efficient order, might occupy different size in memory and thus speed up the execution. <coughs> Another thing I would like to touch on is, uh, sorry, <coughs> is how data is stored in memory. Uh, we can estimate the size of the structure, but it doesn't actually end here. Memory on the heap is stored um, in chunks called M-spans. Now, an M-span is a basic structure that manages the pages of memory in the heap. The size of the page depends on the operating system page, but it, for example, it can be 4 kilobytes or 8 kilobytes. And M-spans have different size classes. Now, in fact, if I remember correctly, you can check all of them out if you're curious in sizeclasses.go. Um, and here you can see a few examples of them. They go from eight up to 32 kilobytes. And this is an oversimplified uh, example of how it would look in the memory. So from this you can see that um, from this table that if we have an M-span with a size class of eight bytes, we can fit in 1,024 of objects of such size into a page of the size of eight kilobytes. Another thing to mention is that an M-span can have multiple pages. So <clears throat> you can have multiple pages um, of eight byte, thank you, of eight byte uh, um, objects in them. Um, the memory request to the operating system happens whenever you need a new page um, to store or read through those objects, which means the more we can put into the page, the less we will need to request from the operating system. And uh, last but not the least, the data is stored into the smallest class it can fit. So even if the size of the struct is, for example, 33 bytes according to our calculation, very primitively, it will fit into the size class M span of 48, which is already one and a half times different because of just one byte. So 
These were the structs that I used for the benchmarks. As previously mentioned, they occupied 120 bytes and 72 bytes, respectively. And let's take a look at which MSPEN class they will fit in. This are the possible, not correct one, but possible options just for your own choosing for right now. And uh, the closest ones. And if any of you guessed 80 and 128, you would be correct. In fact, the struct with, with the 72 bytes would fit in 80 byte M's pen class, and 128 would fit neatly in 128. But what I love about this is that if you just add one more field with one more Boolean, you will tip over the unoptimized struct into 144 bytes M's pen size class. <laughs> so, in such situation, we would only be able to store 56 of uh, such objects when it could have been 102 in uh, best case scenario. Because adding one byte, uh, one boolean to the optimized struct, in fact, doesn't change in which M spends class it falls. Now, quick summary number two objects fit into M spends of smallest possible appropriate size. And uh, they might occupy actually more memory than initially thought or calculated, which is why I feel like we never think about uh, these, uh, sm sorry, these such small optimizations, but they can really have an impact where we didn't expect. Now, why should you care? If your program uses memory extensively, for example, an app that reads from the queue, does some processing, and writes it to a different queue, it might actually be worth it to check, to do some testing and see if uh, such optimization will bring value. If your app creates uh, millions of objects, say a tracing library that shouldn't really affect the performance of the client applications, it might be a good candidate, for example, to um, have such optimization, which is why my team and I were looking into it and hopefully we will be able to share the results of our work um, soon. Now, um, another side to the story is why should you avoid such optimization? Fields are often arranged in a logical order that reflects their relationship to, of the, and the usage in the program, and changing this order can make the code harder and more difficult to understand and maintain. <coughs> Sorry. In some cases, changing the order of a struct of struct fields can be considered as a breaking change, and it can lead to compatibility issues for existing users who expect a certain um, layout. Now, if a struct is used in a data interchange, for example, network protocols, file formats, etc., reordering the fields can break compatibility, and other systems expecting a specific layout will fail to interpret the data correctly. This is probably why this is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is probably, I underscore probably, why this is not done um, in the compiler by default. If the compiler optimized this, um, it could break anything that uses memory mapped files um, if it decides how to pack the structures and fields working programs may break from one compiler to from one compiler version to another. And um, actually, with this, I will be bringing you to the end. Um, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be at GopherCon, and uh, I hope this was insightful. <laughs>